it's not often a news story, can be said truly to be one of the most important, significant scientific discoveries of all time. But this one, in fact, fits the bill. With me is science correspondent Tom Clark. So, Tom, how important is this? Well, Kylie, when they write the history books of space exploration, I think the discovery, the confirmation that there's water on the planet Mars has to rank amongst the top ones. It's the, you know, thought to be the universal prerequisite for life elsewhere in the solar system, elsewhere in the universe. We found it on our sister planet. You know, the NASA scientists who made this announcement, they're Mars scientists, but they were obviously over the moon when they announced it literally just an hour ago. When we first found this out yesterday, we were really pleased. There were champagne corks popping in the downlink room, and we just had a great time of it. It's something we've been waiting quite a while for. Uh, of course, we know the GRS on Mars Odyssey discovered this ice six years ago, but we've now finally touched it and tasted it. That's one thing that hasn't been done before. So the initial discovery, as he was saying, six years ago, what's been the process since then? Well, They've had tantalising evidence there's water there. You know, they've, they've had images of the surface of Mars since the 90s, which have showed, you know, it's been scarred by water. It looks like water's th flowed through ravines before. They've looked at the poles and radar images of the ice caps of the poles have got hydrogen in them. You know, we know there's hydrogen in water, but you couldn't actually, as they say, t you know, touch it, taste it, confirm, really confirm that it's water. What they did here, the, the Phoenix probe that landed on the, the surface of Mars recently that did this experiment, it scraped up Earth. Now, I believe we've got a photo of that scraping. Just below the surface, a centimetre or two below, there's ice. It looked just like ice. And then, indeed, they left it for about four days exposed. That ice melted. As you can see in the photos, those crystals disappear. You can see it again if we want. They, they come, and then it disappears again. They were thinking, this must, be, this must be water. You know, we're nearly there. But what they've done now is used a robotic arm to scoop up some of that ice, drop it. Using the arm, it sort of brings it over the, the spacecraft, drops into a miniature oven that, that's on board, because we're at the pole of Mars. It's very, very cold. Heat it up, turns to liquid, it's water. So, so now that they've found water, I mean, does that mean now they start looking for life? Well, it's most likely there's not life right where this probe is, and frustratingly, it's not designed to look for life, just the prerequisites. We're at the, you know, the, the pole of Mars, it's too cold. But they'll go down, the best place to look for life on Mars would be to go down to the equator. It's much, much warmer there. It's still pretty cold at night, but it's much warmer there. Dig below the surface, and they might find it there. There's a European space probe that's actually, you know, about 2013 it leaves. It will get to Mars in 2014 with the ability to dig, and they might find it. So you're talking about Martians, effectively. I mean, doesn't this increase the possibility that there is intelligent life elsewhere on the universe? It certainly increases that hope. You know, there's water out there. It's on our neighbouring planet. That means it could be elsewhere in the universe. If they find Martians, there'll be little bacteria, probably, not legs. But Will they be green? They might be green, okay. but they'll have Martian DNA, and that gives us an idea of what to look for elsewhere in the, in the solar system, elsewhere in the universe, for life. Okay, Tom Clark, thanks very much.